Good morning and happy Sabbath, Mount Calvary. These are today's announcements. We want to remind you that we have a prayer line open every day except for Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. When we have a team of prayer warriors who are available to take in your prayer requests and pray with you. So whatever issues or situation that you're going through, bring it to the Lord in prayer. And like I said, we have prayer warriors who are here to help pray for you for whatever prayer request you may have. Information at the bottom of your screen. And speaking of prayer, we ask that you keep the Trim family in your prayer as Deacon Crazy Trim has sadly lost his father this week. So again, we ask that you keep the Trim family in your prayer as they go through this time of bereavement. Reach out, cards, flowers. Let him know that we do love him and that we're praying for him and his family as they go through this time. Additionally, we want to remind you that every Wednesday night, we have Wednesday Night Live starting at 7 p.m. with Dr. Moses Brown and guests. We invite you to tune in and enjoy the spirit-filled time and program that Dr. Brown and his guests have planned out for us this week. We want to also remind you that Adult Sabbath School is every Saturday morning or every Sabbath morning starting at 9.45 a.m. via Zoom. So please, tune in. Let's talk about the Sabbath School lesson that we had this week. I know I enjoyed it. So please, tune in every Sabbath morning at 9.45 via Zoom for our Dark Sabbath School class. We want to remind you that this week is our watch Shaking Up, which will happen at 4.30 p.m. via YouTube. So we invite you to tune in to what the young people have going on. Again, that's 4.30 via YouTube for Watts Shaking It Up. We want to remind everyone that camp meeting is coming soon. And that's our SEC camp meeting, which will start June 19 in the afternoon. It will run through June 26. It will be all virtual. So we invite you to tune in for camp meeting. And I said it's June 19, starting in the afternoon, running through June 26. Now we want to take this time to thank all those who have given. Be it, um, you have your tithe, your offering, your, your clothes donation, your, your food donation. We thank you because that is how we continue to spread the gospel and we also keep the lights on here in this church. So we thank you for your donations. And for all those who have not yet had the opportunity to give and who want to give, we want to let you know that there are three ways that you can give. The first way is to logging on to our website and clicking on the giving tab at the top right hand corner of the screen. From there, you can just follow the directions. We also have Cash App for those of you who like to give via Cash App. And the information, again, like I said, is at the bottom of your screen. Now, we understand that not everyone is comfortable with giving online or giving via Cash App. So, therefore, we have a third way to give, which is every Monday between the hours of 5 and 7, you can actually drop off your tithing offering to the church. We actually have someone who will be here to receive um, those tithing offerings from you. Again, we want to thank everyone for all of your hard work. We thank you for all of your donations. We thank you for all of your prayers and your support. And we want to ask that you all continue to do that. And we invite you, again, this Sabbath to enjoy um, the Sabbath worship service that we have for you. Again, happy Sabbath, Mount Calvary and friends, and we hope that you all have a blessed Sabbath day.
where I gotta be. Good morning, Mount Calvary family and visiting guests. We want to welcome you today to our Divine Worship Hour, and we trust that you will have a high time in Zion today with us. Hats off to all our graduates. May God continue to enlarge your territory. Marcia Graham graduated from the Oakwood University with a Bachelor of Science. She states, as I enter the workforce, I look forward to all the things God has in store for my future. Eris Lovett graduated from Florida Virtual School. She will be pursuing a Bachelor of Arts in business as she continues to grow her own small business. She will begin her college career at Hillsborough Community College and later continue to further her education by attending the University of South Florida. Dawn Severino and Chauncey Brooks are delighted to announce the graduation of Savannah Gabrielle Severino from F.W. Springstead High School. Savannah's record of academic excellence has earned her a diploma with the highest honors. Savannah rallied school spirit as a freshman junior varsity cheerleader and ultimately as the captain of the senior varsity cheer team. She spent time dancing and entertaining on stage with local community theater groups and spent an enlightening summer volunteering at the Boys and Girls Club. The children ages 5 to 12 were a great reminder of what it means to love your neighbor and to cherish God's blessings. Encouraged by her passion for fairness and equality, Savannah has decided to matriculate at the University of South Florida with plans to become an attorney. Congratulations, Savannah. Jada Dora Dickens graduated from Oakwood University with a Bachelor of Science degree in nursing. Jada starts her new nursing position in August 2021 at Advent Health in Altamont Springs, Florida. Sabina Currington, MSN, RN, graduated from Grand Canyon University in December of 2020 with a Master of Nursing Education. Her future goal is to become an adjunct professor or clinical instructor to educate future nurses. Joseph Miguel James, a 2021 graduate of Brooks de Bartlow Collegiate High School and Hillsborough Community College. He's planning to be an investment banker and currently employed at Suncoast Schools Federal Credit Union. He will be attending the University of South Florida in the fall. Cheyenne D. Wilson graduated from Hillsboro High School and will be attending Hillsboro Community College, majoring in dental hygiene. Christina Baton graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Health Administration. Her favorite scripture is Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. These are her words to live by, the serenity prayer. Mm -hmm. 
Shazé E. Wilson, graduated from Hillsborough High School on June 1st and will be attending Hillsborough Community College, majoring in criminal justice. Latoya Texera received a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from Gallen College of Nursing on April 20th, 2021. She is currently employed at the James A. Haley Veterans Hospital. Devion Davis graduated from Hillsborough Community College with a degree in Early Childhood Management with a 4.5 GPA. She hopes to become a coordinator for the YMCA, possibly partnering with Moving Logistics, becoming a manager and a dispatcher. She says, I can't wait to see what God has in store for me. Destiny Gail Evans, a 2021 graduate of North Tampa Christian Academy. She was the senior class president and will be attending Southern Adventist University in College Dell, Tennessee, beginning her program in July 2021, majoring in graphic design. Vernika Williams graduated from the University of Florida. Her future plans? Getting accepted into medical school to become an emergency physician. Isaiah Jelani Lawrence graduated from Zephyr Hills High School. He plans to attend Southern Adventist University in College Dale, Tennessee majoring in theology. Sky India Torrey is a graduating senior at Central High School in Brooksville, Florida. She is a part of the National Society of High School Scholars. Sky participated in the drama club, took welding, and participated in the Born to Win summer program for three years. Sky plans to pursue a career in multimedia and illustration while attending Ringling College of Art and Design in Sarasota, Florida. Her hobbies include listening to a variety of music, drawing, painting, and bike riding. One of her works of arts is featured in the 2020 life film in augmented reality immersive journal, Soul Healing. It can be purchased on Amazon or 2020lifeform.com. Her artwork was also featured in Artgate Virtual Reality Gallery and Redbubble.com. You can also find her shop on Solo Sky Shop. Congratulations, Sky. We are so proud of our interim pastor, Pastor Pierre Francois. He is originally from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and a former member of Sinai Haitian SDA Church in Plantation. Pastor Francois holds a Bachelor of Science in Human Resources Development from the University of Florida. He holds a Master of Divinity from the Andrews University. He has recently completed a Master of Business Administration from Nova Southeastern University and a certification as a Project Management Professional. Pastor Francois is married to the former Erica Norton of Tampa, Florida. The Lord has blessed them with two beautiful children, Nathan, age 11, and Morgan, age 5. Currently, Pastor Francois serves as the Director of Sabbath School, Children's Ministries, and Prison Ministries for the Southeastern Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Congratulations to all our Mount Calvary graduates and our Mount Calvary friends. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. excited that
that you decided to worship in Mount Calvary this morning. Sing with us as we welcome in the Holy Spirit this morning.
you today that it's okay to lift your hands and give them away and give God your highest praise. We just want to invite him in today into your home, into your space, into your heart. Lord, he is Lord. He has risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for all that you are doing for each and every one of us, Father. We ask you, Lord, continue to be with us and to bless us and to lead us and guide us, Lord, to the path of righteousness. Because, Lord, you know we know you are coming soon, and when you come, Father, we all want to be with you, Father, and have that eternal life, Lord, living in your heavenly kingdom forever in the New Jerusalem, Father. Lord, I ask you to bless this church, all of us that are attending this church, or whether they are watching it on YouTube, Yard, or Facebook, Father. Be with those that are watching this program, whether they are visitors or church members, Father. Lord, bless our church leaders, our pastors, our elders, our deacons, our deaconess department heads and assistants, Father. Continue to be with our praise team, our musicians, all uh, right, video team and audio team, Father. Bless them in a mighty and special way, Father. I'd like you to bless our speaker for today also. Be good to speak in the speaker's family, Lord. Bless them in a mighty and special way, Lord. Continue to watch over us, Father, and to bless all of us in a mighty and special way, Lord. There is no love like your love, Father, and we continue to give you, Lord, the glory, the honor, and the praise. Thank you for being such a good, loving, and caring, and forgiving God, Father. Again, Lord, continue to be of our sick, the homeless, the people in prison and jail, Father. Bless them in a mighty special way. Lord, we all your children, no matter what color our skin are or what language we speak. You made us in your image, and we thank you, Father, for all that you are doing and continue to do for us, Father. Continue to keep us safe, Lord, during this time of this COVID-19, Father. Continue to bless us, Lord. But we love you and we thank you as we continue to give you, Lord, the glory, the honor, and the praise, Father. Because there is no love like yours, Father. We all sin us, Father, saved by your grace and your mercy. So continue to be with us and to bless us, Father. And I'd just like to thank you as we continue to give you, Lord, that glory, honor, and the praise, Father. Bless us, watch over us, and protect us, Father. I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hi, my name is Pastor Pierre Francois, and I am the interim pastor here at the Mount Calvary Seventh-day Adventist Church in Tampa, Florida.
And I'm, I just want to let you know that great things are happening right here at Mount Calvary. Every week, even during the week, God is blessing. God is using our ministries to touch lives, to inspire, to, to teach the word and to and to help grow us into the, the disciples that that would be ready for for Jesus when he comes. I want to let you know that we have an awesome worship experience with a, with an awesome praise team and band to really get you in the mood of worship, to really acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit and a loving God who wants to embrace you in his arms. That we, uh, we preach the word. We come straight from the Bible here at Mount Calvary. And, and uh, uh, so every week expect an awesome word that is going to be delivered from scripture. There's, go there's, there's, uh, there's an afternoon program for our young adults and we have Bible studies for all age groups, all age groups, children, youth and adult that take place on, uh, uh, every weekend. During the week, the, the, it doesn't stop. We have prayer services that take place, prayer, prayer, prayer lines and Zoom calls that take place every morning. Uh, uh, some even early in the wee hours of the morning. As you rise, you rise with the Lord. And finally, we have a midweek worship service that provides you an opportunity to hear the word, to hear testimonies, to hear stories shared about how God has transformed lives and how he can transform your life. There are so many other things that are happening here with our academy, with our community service outreach programs, with all of the various fellowship ministries, our men's and women's ministries. We don't have time to talk about it all. But what, what I do want you to know is that we want to partner with you, or better yet, we want you to partner with us as we endeavor to preach this everlasting gospel to them that dwell on the earth. We need you to give to support this ministry, to support this church and its various ministries as we attempt to operate in the commission that Jesus has given us so that when he comes, there's a generation waiting on his return. Thank you. And I hope uh, uh, to see you next on our next broadcast. And I hope that you'll partner with us uh, in, in ministry.
So for the rest of my life, said I owe him everything. For the rest of my life, I owe him everything. For the rest of my life, I serve him. For the rest of my life, is that your request too? says have your way in my life Lord have your way in this place and when we think about that place yes we, we mean it may mean in the sanctuary in our homes but more importantly in our hearts God please have your way in our heart today so sing with us if you can catch the lyrics it's very simple we enjoy your worship with us today oh this place have your way in this place we want more in this place so have your way everybody sing over for in this place say have your way this place, Father, we want more in this place. So have your way. Come on, let's do that again. Sing overflow in this place. Have your way in this place. Oh, 
will be yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey, when your spirit, when it speaks to me, with my Thank you, praise team. To the people of God, great is his faithfulness. Happy Sabbath to everyone out there. Usually, 
when I go visiting churches and I would be speaking they asked me to bring greetings from my home church so I would um, go through the motion of I bring you greetings from Mount Calvary but this afternoon I bring you greetings from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ it is indeed a beautiful day to be worship God our Creator and King I come to you this afternoon in many capacity but let me take a few words to you I miss my church family I miss you Mount Calvary to our members we miss you praise God three weeks from now we will begin to open and we will see some of you it is a very difficult and challenging time we face we would have had over the last two years at least for me the opportunity to work with three pastors as you become accustomed to one it's time to, ad to adjust to the other so I am pleading to our members please work with me and the leadership of our church to welcome our new pastor Larry Johnson as he endeavors to rebuild the foundation of many generations this church the Seventh-day Adventist Church is a movement we are accustomed to pastor coming and pastor going we should never accustom to the idea that a pastor will be here for a very very long time that is not regular order so we we come to this point in our history we must move forward we must move forward on our knees we must move forward because god is calling us to go forth we fail if we refuse to go forward it is with that in mind that I find it that God impressing upon my spirit to speak to the people of God
encouraging us to go on why standing sitting here refusing to move forward going back to yes to years the work is great the time is short we must move forward as a church failure to go forward will hinder progress I believe and I saw with my eyes God mercies and his grace moving forward so I am honored to be here this afternoon standing and the backs of those who have led this church before me to my mentor one former first elder of this church the late Theodore Johnson I recall He would refer to me as little man, and daring to including me in the leadership as a young man. So, the call that God gave to one of the minor prophets in Scripture. Amos 7 verse 14 speak to this. Amos, as he was called to proclaim to God's people, he started by saying, I am not a prophet, neither I am the son of a prophet. But I am called to speak to Israel. Therefore, I'm saying that I'm called to speak to God's people for such a time like this. Today's topic, journey into the unknown will you pray with me eternal God and Father let me be a nail upon the wall hung on it a picture of Jesus let men and women see the face of Jesus. Hide me behind the cross. Speak to your servant. Challenge. Confront and comfort your people in Jesus name amen life have many twists and turns negotiating the fears the anxieties and the difficulties The unknown come to us in no uncertain way. 
freezes, paralyzes to a point of hopelessness, despair. So we spend our times wondering about stuff. Introspect. Wondering what if. Over the last year and a half, the world came to a screeching halt. A full stop. Millions lost their lives. Places of amusement, tourist destination, popular spots, close. Earth, the habit inhabitant of Earth, God's creation, came to a complete stop. Life come to a point wherein nobody knows what is going on. So we enter into that period of the unknown. Confronted with a virus. His name, Corona 19. Nobody knows anything about it. I recall we thought it would be two months and it's over with. We made plans. For two months. When that time came, we find ourselves in the predicament. Our church is closed, losing jobs. Stranded, as many would say, at home. To me, the best place to be stranded is at home. If you are not stranded at sea, the best place to be is in your home. You know, I, I listen to people saying they're tired to be at home. I think, from my perspective, Home is the best place to be stranded. Because you get the opportunity to rebuild back better relationship with our spouse, our children. You know, we have seen so many crises within the church. Families are in crisis. Wives are in crisis. Husbands are in crisis. Children are in crisis. Everyone is involved in someone crisis or another. Coronavirus gives us the opportunity to rebuild and to rebuild back better. Relationship with our spouse and our family members and I believe that our churches will come back better than before. 
I still believe that our best days are yet ahead of us, not behind us. Because we are one day closer to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Somebody said, as people die everywhere, all over the world, Another one gone. Another one bite the dust. As black people, we recall between the years 1600 and 1800s, over 20 millions. People uprooted from their home, travel to the world in what we call the Middle Passage. Stolen from Africa, brought to the Caribbean and the Americas, fighting an arrival. Fighting for survival. And God do know that we are still fighting as black men. The summer of last year, we saw with our eyes black men being killed like bird by the agency of the state under the pretense of law and order. We have become an endangered species among men on earth. Black people, we have gone through the years of trial of slavery, still don't be accepted by a nation that we build with our sweat, our tears, our blood, and our lives unappreciated, underpaid. Though have a sense of belonging because we have never felt like we were home at all. History will judge us. However, The psalmist David in Psalms 23 The Lord is my shepherd Verse 4 said Yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I'm telling you, I'm suggesting to us today, we must face the challenges of the unknown. We must confront the issues In the marketplace of ideas, out there in the marketplace where we are confronted as Seventh-day Adventists, who are these people? Because we have been cultured in recent time to lay low. We don't want people to know we belong to this 
great distinguished body of people, I stand boldly to declare I'm not ashamed to be a part of this movement because it is God's vehicle that will take us from where we are to where we want to go. This body of believers we were noted in time past for our rigorous studying of the word of God. We've got to go back to basic. We must study again. We must study again and again and again. We cannot, we cannot allow them to dictate to us, to marginalize us about who we are. We are indeed God's chosen people. The Exodus Israel journey from Egypt to the promised land. A journey that should have taken a little while. But because of unbelief, division in the ranks, this journey took such long, long time. We must go back to the songs of Zion. Israel in captivity. Psalms 137. One and three. It says, by the river of Babylon... Where we sat down, there we wept when we remember Zion. For those that carried us captive, they required of us, they said, sing us one of those songs of Zion. But he said, how can I sing the Lord's song? In a strange land. Hymns. Holy Spirit. Faithful guide. Ever near the Christian side. Him. Courage brother. Do not stumble. Though the path be dark as night. There is a star that guides the humble. Trust in God and do the right. Tread bravely. Strong or weary. Trust in God. Do the right. Sweet promise of heaven. Those are songs that give us peace in the night season. God promised to come quickly and relieve us from this suffering. So if you would just follow with me in the context of the, the, the sermon... As I peruse 
In Genesis 50, verse 19 through 22, we are told in Scripture about the experience of God's servant Joseph. I will not um, spend a lot of time dealing with Joseph, but for a point of reference, it says, And Joseph said to his brethren, I am dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land which he swore to Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. Then Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel, saying, God surely will visit you, and you shall be carried. And he said, take my bones and carry them up with you. That's the whole essence of, of what he's saying. Because he believed. He died with the expectation that he would have reached the promised land. Journey into the unknown. In an attempt to bring context. Joseph sold into slavery by his own brothers. I must confess to you that this worried me for some times. His brother. While at home, among them, God visited the young man, gave him a dream. He told the dream to his siblings, his parents. You know, sometimes you should not and you cannot even tell your dreams to your brothers because envy and covetousness drives people even their own blood relatives to destroy them so to my young Brothers and sisters, Joseph's dreams derail, denied, and apparently destroy, went into Egypt, but thank be to God. God orchestrating in history an expected end for the young man, Joseph. He arranged with time, allow him to be placed in a position of influence because God knows that he surely will be needed. And I believe that God places us in different avenues of life. So we cannot spend our time majoring in minors. The issues that so many want to dwell in. Philip Novak, writing in the book, The World's Religion, 
Sacred Texts of World Religions, page 107. The story of two monks who were on a pilgrimage. They came to a ford in the river. There they saw a girl dressed in all her finery and obviously not knowing what to do. For she, for the river was high and she didn't want her dress to get wet or spoiled. With, without much to do, one of the monks took her on his back and carried her across the river to the other side. There he put her down And they continued their journey. But alas, the other monks started to complain. Surely, it is not right to touch a woman. It is against the commandment of monks. And so on and so on. Steadily, he complains. The monk that carried the girl across the river finally broke his silence and remarked, I said her down on the other side of the river but you are still carrying her what is the lesson I'm saying to us that we spend so much time majoring over minor stuff which have no relevance to the mission at all I would have had the opportunity to see all this coming. So let us pitch our tent for a moment. As I confront the very elementary issue I will disturb the comfort of your conscience this text of scripture as I contemplate as I labored There was no rest in my spirit. The book, Judges 2, verse 8 and 10. It says, Now Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died. And when he was 110 years old, Verse 10, he said, when all the, that generation had gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done. This scripture continued to dance in my brain Give me no peace day and night. Because it was troubling 
in two, two, two cents. Two critical areas that the church could learn from. One, failure of leadership. I'm going to meddle in my church now. We fail our young people. We did not prepare them for leadership. We excluded them out of the decision making. They were not at the table when the decision were made concerning them. Apparently, in snubbing them, they decide to leave. And we become disturbed when we look around and we do not see our young people in our churches. This is not endemic to Mount Calvary. This is an issue in many Seventh-day Adventist church. As you visit all around the world, I have had the opportunity to visit different parts of, of the world. And I saw within our churches, slowly our young people are leaving and we are wondering where are they now. Judges 2 troubled my spirit because it says, let me um, analyze the text. He said, when Joshua died, one of two great leaders that came out of that journey from Egypt to the promised land. Moses and Joshua. Caleb, the other. Everybody else died along the way. However, the time has arrived God took Joshua of, of the scene of action. Verse 10 continued to trouble me because it says that when that generation gathered with the fathers, so in studying, in researching, the term gathered in the context, it means they all died. When that generation that came out of Egypt died. The following generation, the next, the immediate generation that follows Joshua. The scripture said they knew not. God, what went wrong, my brothers and my sisters? It is disturbing to know that immediately after that great display of God's goodness and his grace in, in, in taking the people from Egypt to Canaan's land, they saw the display of majesty in all its glory. God displayed himself in a real and experiential way among God, his people. Immediately after that generation died, the next generation failed because I've already alluded to the fact that leadership did not make provision. They did not provide for the young people that were with them. 
apparently they believe they were going to be ma living monuments for God. So God in divine love removed them. The other critical point in the text that I want us to examine parental responsibility. So to all the parents out there, to all our parents in our churches, it is your role, it is your responsibility. You must not and you should not rely upon the church or anyone else within the school or wherever they are to educate on the minds of your children about God and his love, what he has done for us. May I, in just no uncertain terms, it is an indictment against us parents when we fail to give our children the best gift of you can give them. You give them Jesus. Let them embrace Jesus in every facet of their life. Neglecting to do so is placing your children at great perils in a world that is vicious. It eats them alive. So, parents, I'm pleading with you earnestly. I'm praying with you tenderly. I'm asking you give your children a chance that they may experience the love of God that in their later years when the evil days come nigh, they would have themselves would have said, I have no pleasure in, in the things of the world. Give me Jesus. E.G. White, writing in the book, The Adventist Home, page 411, and I quote, the mental tastes must be disciplined and educated. With the greatest care, parents must begin early to unfold the scripture to the expanding minds of their children that proper habits of thoughts may be formed. No effort should be spared to establish these right habits. End quote. We must engage our young peoples. So, I'm calling the leadership of our church. Myself, along with all the other leaders, make ourselves available to our young people. Neutral, mentor, guide. If we can just, each one of us, just take one person, one individual, one young person, and decide within our heart that we are going to work with that individual as we retool ourselves, 
coming back from that absence of a year and a half. May it be a decision made in our own lives. That we are not going back to things as usual. We are not going back from whence we came. We believe our best years are yet ahead of us. Because God, in the journey of life, we move forward. Romans 8.28 gives us, he said, all things, all things work together for good, for, for the children of God, for the child of God. So, as I close, I tell you, that this discourse to confront, to challenge, and to comfort. We, as a people, this journey into the unknown, we are covered with His grace, connected in the blessed hope of Jesus, in the blessed hope of turn. We journey on. Jesus. John 6, 35. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. John 10, 7. I am the door of the sheep. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the true vine. Revelation 1 verse 8 said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Exodus. Movements of God's people. Exodus. The answer to the journey, the unknown, the missing, the variables of the unknown, to the equation. God, in Exodus 13, 22, he took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. What am I saying? If we are going to successfully negotiate the unknown, it is imperative that we embrace the God of the unknown. If we are going to be successful, if we are going to be successful, we must embrace Everyone within this body of Christ, the church. We must not marginalize. We should not make 
individual feel that they don't belong. All of us are part of the equation. To deny to discourage to disregard is great danger in this journey. As we look forward to working with our new pastor, I'm calling upon church leadership, the elders, the deacons, deaconesses, every departmental leaders our youth not under my watch I refuse to believe that we cannot do better I refuse to believe that our young people should not involve I recall my days in my own church in Jamaica the young people at that time our church gave us wings so we could soar in church leadership this pandemic had allowed me to reconnect with some of these leaders it amazes me to see so many of us in church leadership still serving because they invested in us. They believe in us. They gave us what we need. They encouraged us to, to go forward. Go forward, Mount Calvary. Go forward, Mount Calvary. The better days is yet to come. God is going to finish the work with the young people, the clergy, along with the laity, God will use to finish the work. We must work. We must work while it is yet day. God is coming, people. Get ready. Get your hands to the plow. Work, 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 work. The night is come. God, God is coming. Let us move forward in love. Praise God. I believe this is the calling for our time and I believe this is the conviction I have that we must go forward we refuse to go forward for a little while we rest enough it's a long while we have been in this position stagnant still mediocrity worshiping to with emotion no appetite for work work you must work so may God help us may God be with us as we enter into the unknown trusting that God is with us God is with us by fire by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Go on, go on, go on, go on now. God is going to finish the work with us. Praise God. Thank you, thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your servant, Deliver that which you have gave to him. The blood has been off my shoulder. I have spoken that which you have called me to do. Now, the people must respond. So I'm encouraging all of us 
We pray, oh God, give us a new heart, a new desire for worship, a new spirit renewed in us to go forward. The unknown beckons your promise to be with us. Bless us as we continue to enjoy the presence, the beauty Sabbath rest. In the holy and righteous name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. was amazing but unfortunately all good things must come to an end and since we must say farewell we'll bid you good tidings as we do we hope that you'll have a pleasant week until next time god bless Attention everyone, the Mount Calvary's Bliss Program, I Am Just a Sister Away, has a new date. The new date is July 10th, 2021 at 4 p.m. with our very own Elder Pat Smith as the guest speaker. The Zoom meeting ID is 849-7745-4683. So be sure to tune in on July 10th at 4 p.m. Attention all fathers of Mount Calvary. Please submit a picture of yourself for our special Father's Day tribute on June 19, 2021. It can be a picture by yourself or a picture with your family. We need all pictures by June 12, 2021. up on Wednesday Night Prayer Live, Dr. Brown talks to a current and a former missionary. 
special guests Carrie Han of Adventist Frontier Missions and Chaplain Althea Truman, former missionary, will give inside information on how to become a missionary. Join service on YouTube or Facebook June 16 at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss it. Tune in today at 4.30 for Shaking It Up with host Pastor Evans Melador as we discuss the topic, We the People, No, We the Church. Please refer to the Flock Note Bulletin for all announcements, links, and times. If you'd like to connect with us, please contact us at www.mountcalvarysda.org or visit us on Facebook and continue to watch us on YouTube at Mount Calvary SDA Tampa. And be sure to subscribe to our page. Have a happy Sabbath.